Bam, and just like that, it's Friday, folks. Pat is unable to make it today, so I'm going to be riding solo. I hope that's okay. Um, I'll We'll try to have some fun banter here back and forth. <laughs> so we're having technical issues that we can't figure out. Pat's got a really good setup. He's got excellent internet speed now, but something's happening through the software I'm using when I'm streaming, where and it happened with somebody just the other day where I talk and then there's this delay. Can you hear me? And I wait. And there's, yeah. So uh, I've got to dive into it and see what's going on, but I didn't want to put you through the pain of uh, seeing that today. So I hope it's all coming out okay on your end. Let me know in the chat if it is not, and uh, we will run forward. So I, you can see by the ticker below, it's very interesting where the numbers are kind of shaken out here. We've got 14,772 listings. If you're a real estate agent, I'm going to explain to you what I think is going on with that number. And you can see that there's 3,700 new contracts. Now, that's up about 100 versus the last seven days. That's not a huge number, just only up 100. But what's interesting is when we look at it and track it, you can see this bottom line here is our sales. And we're down, and it looks like we've just hit a floor, and we're staying there. We're not going below, below 2,200. We're staying right at that floor. New listings, they went up a little bit, and then they came right back down, and now they just went up for like the day. So there's a gap of 1,374 new contracts versus new listings. Now, the narrative out there is that there's a lot more people listing their house. There isn't. There isn't. When you look at new listings, we're still between 3,400 and 3,700 listings on a seven-day period. That's not a lot more people listing their houses, but because there's this gap between the new listings that are coming on, even though that number is low and our sales are so low, you're filling up the bathtub, but it's not draining as fast as it used to. So the active listing count is climbing. That's how we ended up almost at 15,000 units right now in our market. And again, I want to stress, it's not because more and more people are listing their house. It's just that now when it's listed, it's staying on the market longer. And uh, in some parts of the Valley, it's not, it's not quite that painful. Now, if we look at, this is from the MLS, our regional Arizona MLS, and uh, a guy named Tom Ruff puts it together. If you go down the bottom here, you can see that, see if I get my handy dandy little red thing here. This is uh, data through the third quarter. We've got 56,248 total units that have sold, which is the lowest year on record, except for when you go back to 2008 here and seven. So 44,000 right there. So we can compare this to 2006 as far as sales volume. Now, we had a lot less population back here, too. So that's very that's a very alarmingly low number when it comes to sales. And why not? We went up to 8.03% yesterday. And here's what the Cromford market index is shaking out. You can see that Chandler is still very much a seller's market, but I don't know how much longer. They went down 21% last week in the CMI. Now remember, that's not 21% in the price in prices. That's just the Cromford market index. <coughs> the buyer's markets are definitely Buckeye, Goodyear, and Queen Creek and Maricopa. That's where all the building's going on. So there's a lot more inventory down there. So you're seeing them in the 80s and Paradise Valley's 162. So they're all going down considerably. If we look at sales per month, you can see here, this is showing us the same thing almost on the other chart. Uh, 2313 so far in October, 5111 in September. Now I had said for a while there that September and October is probably the best time to list your house this year because inventory is going to be higher in November, December, and sales are going to be lower. And here we are, two, about two weeks earlier than I thought. We can see that we're trending up on active listings, 11,500, 11,800, about 300 to 400 a week. But with sales only staying here, that number just continues to grow. And that's where we're at. Then you look here on this chart, and this shows average list price per square foot. Now, I find this one interesting. It's finally flattened out. 
But we're at the lowest sales point we've been for a long, long time, folks. And inventory is still well below historical standards. And yet list prices are staying firm. Why is that? I don't know. Um, the people that are listing their houses now, I think they very well need to consider that in order to make your house attractive to this very low volume of buyers, uh, you better pop down that, that listing price uh, because it's, it's not coming down. It's come down just a little bit over the course of the year. Uh, will it be that way in January? Probably. I don't see what the rate increase that we've had now coming in at uh, 8.03, that there's anything that's going to change between now and January that says, oh, okay, now we're back to normal. Here's the number of price changes. So people that have listed their homes, um, they've had to adjust more and more and more as each passing week goes on. Um, I saw something on Facebook the other day, this poor agent, she said she had a friend of hers. She's sold her two or three houses over her lifetime. And she was talking about listing her home. And uh, she was... <laughs> They were having conversations on how to get ready and when they were going to do it. And then she called the agent and said uh, uh, that she had listed her house on Zillow and, and uh, to test the market as a for sale by owner. And she said, and she had priced it way too high. Now, why, why would somebody try that? Well, because they don't really know what's going on in the market right now. It's not dire. It's slow. But why would you test the market? So she thought, well, my house is worth this. I'll put it on Zillow as a uh, coming soon for sale by owner and see what happens. Well, guess what happened? Nothing. It didn't sell. <laughs> I find that that's, uh, you know, I don't know. No comment. Um, here is the one that I like to watch right here. Now, these numbers, when they cross, folks, like they did here. I'm going to erase that for a second. This, this area right here is when they cross. Notice the blue dots. On the index came above the red dots. Well, prices went down at that point. And right now, they haven't even met yet. So that hasn't happened yet. Uh, but at the rate we're going, we're going to be in a balanced market in the, our entire market in a matter of a few weeks. Not a few months, but in a few weeks. And if we look at here at foreclosures pending, they're still way down here. I've seen some national articles about foreclosures being way up. They are up as far as a percentage, like 11%, but I've always heard, you've heard me say, a large percentage of a small number is still a small number. Now, one of my colleague friends up in uh, the Pacific Northwest shared something interesting, interesting with me this morning. He said that they are discovering that some of these forbearances that they have, the balances on the forbearances that are kind of carried as a second mortgage are showing up when they do get the payoff amounts at the bank and people are not disclosing. You know, I, I only owe 250,000 on my house and there's this forbearance balance out there of another 20 grand and they're not disclosing it. So they're getting in there, getting the offer accepted and then they pull the payoff amount and they go, Oh, by the way, here's this other amount. Now that doesn't affect the buyer unless the other amount is so big that now the seller can't get out from underneath it. But you can't hide that stuff, folks. You can't just wish and hope it doesn't go away. Um, but here's, uh, oh, Jorge here says, uh, what does days on market look like? Are we able to see the percentage of active listings that have price reduction? So I think I just showed that one just a moment ago. Let me take a look here again. Um, this is the number of price changes per week, which are all price reductions. So there's 1,915 homes out of the 14,000 that we have out there now. So you can divide that. Days on market. Um, see if I can find that here for you. Days on market sales here. Um, nothing alarming. It's showing there 54 days. Now, that doesn't mean your home's been on the market 54 days. It takes between 30 and 45 days to close a home. So the whole time the clock is ticking then. So it means maybe your house is on the market a couple of weeks, nothing too alarming. Here's some interesting stats. So <coughs> excuse me, need a glass of water. As you look towards the pending doom and gloom that we hear a lot of, there's some things to uh, consider. Hey, thanks Jorge. Thanks for popping on. I appreciate you being here. Um, 
when do you have to give your house back? Everybody says, well, we're going to have a recession. We're going to have high unemployment. People are going to have to foreclose on their homes. Okay. Let's talk about that for a moment. 42% of all homes out there now don't have a mortgage. 42%. 44%. 44.7% have a mortgage below 4%. 26% have a mortgage below 3%. 20.3% have a mortgage between 4 and 5%, and only 37 have a mortgage higher than 6%. Most of those people that have a mortgage 3% or lower, or sometimes even 4% or lower, if they have to get out of their house, leave their house, and then go rent something, a one-bedroom apartment is probably going to cost them more than what they're paying with their 3% mortgage. So why are they going to leave? Some of those homes, people can qualify for that payment with unemployment benefits. So my point is a recession and losing your jobs, there's a large swath of people out there. It's really not going to bother versus times past. 2008, nobody had a 3% mortgage. Nobody. Oh, wait, some did. They had 1% and 2% notes that reset. That was the problem. And Mike here is saying, I'm considering buying a new build. Does having a real estate agent even matter when going through the builder? It doesn't cost you anymore, so why not? Um, it can help. It can help a great deal sometimes. Sometimes you don't need them. Um, you don't know you need them until you need them. Uh, now, the, the rules at the builders is you have to, um, uh, the agent has to come in and register that you're coming to see the house. If he's unable to make it, he's got to um, sign up to be your agent or he goes in with you. The advantage is, excuse me, dry as toast today. Sometimes there's just some terms and things in the contract that you have questions about that you don't know, you've never seen before, you don't understand. Um, you know, some of the earnest monies right now are outrageous. Uh, what are the earnest monies that some of the other builders? Well, we can tell you some of them are really low. Your deposit can be $4,000, $5,000. Some of them want twenty grand up front, earnest money. Well, what are you, you going to do wrong to make you lose that earnest money? Um, an agent can read that and tell you. Um, so fact is, it's, they're, not, you know, they're still offering commissions for buyer agents. Um, while we say that doesn't cost you anything, it, it's built into the price of the home. It's built into the, uh, to the proceeds, the commission. So, um, you know, we're not entirely free, in other words. But if you went in without an agent, let me tell you this, they don't lower the price. So let's say an agent represented you and they paid that agent $10,000 to bring you in as a buyer, but you went in by yourself, you're not getting the house $10,000 cheaper. They don't change it. The other thing to watch out for is what are they doing in financing? What are they offering? Um, what are the terms? When they are giving you a rate buy down, how many years is that rate buy down? Are they buying it down for the life of the loan? How much money are they giving you? Can you use that money for anything? If they're going to give you $20,000 to buy down the rate, and yes, we're seeing that, can you use that $20,000 for a price reduction? How do you negotiate that? So um, it doesn't hurt to have an agent. The other thing I will stress, and I got a video coming out at four o'clock. If you have ever seen any of the videos where we have Dylan with Pro Inspect on, he has really been honing in on new construction lately. I encourage you at four o'clock, please watch this video. Uh, some of it's funny. It's sad, but it's funny. Some of the things that he's finding, and, especially, and it's all new construction. It's pre-drywall inspection. Before they put up the drywall, he can see, um, you know, your plumbing, your wiring and stuff. And, and he's just got some interesting finds and some very interesting video and pictures. And... Uh, it's worth your time. It's on at uh, four. It'll replay um, all until eternity. But before you go into new construction, watch this. I guarantee you, you'll hire an inspector to inspect that house. You watch that video. You let me know in the comments if you think I'm right when I say that. Sarcasm. Love that name. I saw where people with 4% mortgages are refined, pulling out the money. I've seen that, but not much. Statistically, I've seen that's very, very low. Um, not like the ATM machines we used to see. You remember in 2005 and 2006 and even 2007, all the hot tub places that were out there, all the places where you could build these barbecue islands, all these 
businesses that were out there that were relying on on uh, second mortgages. You get a second mortgage, come in, and you got this big barbecue island out in your pool. The swimming pool companies were thriving, and uh, barbecue places were going crazy. And that's they were all pulling out the money and buying toys and stuff. And Pat says he is here. Welcome, Pat. What's my rate, McMasters? We're going to figure out that stuff right there. Pat, do you know, do you have a stat that shows how many people 4% mortgages are actually refining and pulling out the money? Because I don't think they're refining now. Nobody's going to refi uh, to try and get a 8% rate so they can get some equity out. But I venture to guess that that number is probably very, very tiny. Again, I want to stress that we are low. Um, we are low as far as sales volume, and I don't see this really going up in January either. Um, um, so it says here, uh, what's this? Frails was tolling Travis. They kicked him out. <laughs> well, I think they actually uh, had a phone conversation at one time for those that know who we're talking about. Pat here says, I was talking to a rep at United Wholesale, and he said out of the 31... He said of the 310,000 loan applications taken, one third are for cash out refis. That's pretty hefty. But the cash out refi, what kind of a rate did they start at, Pat? And then they jumped up. It seems pretty painful for me. Um, and why are they doing it? So one third of them are cash out refis. That's kind of uh, kind of frightening when I think about it. People are giving up. Uh, Quite a bit there. Um, yeah, Terry, um, Travis doesn't troll other YouTube pages. Look, there's there's a couple different industries out here on YouTube. And there's people that are, you know, just trying to share what the numbers are. And then there's people with an agenda. And, um, and then there's some real smart financial people up there that really do a good job of letting you know what's going on in banking. So you really have to look at all the different channels. Uh, there's one out there, I won't say his name, but trust me. I don't think he's ever sold more than two houses in his life. And if you go and look at his channel now and he preaches doom and gloom and everything's going bad, he never would answer anybody in their comments. I've asked him to share some data and he won't do it. But guess what he's doing now? He's got a bot. Every comment's answered with the three, same three words. You got it. It's a bot. Somebody makes a comment, comes right back. You got it. (laughs) I can spot that a mile away. Lots of credit card debt. There is, David. There's a lot of credit card debt out there. There's a lot of bad financial stuff going on out there and and, uh, and a war. You know, things are not good. So you, you have to look and go, okay, well, how slow are sales going to get? I think we're at the floor. I mean, we might go down another 200 every seven days, but I, I think we're down. There. I think despite as bad, bad as everything is, I mean, really, when you look at what's going on right now, Mortgage rates are 8%, 7.97. Sales are as low as they've ever been. We should be down 15 to 20% in prices. Why aren't we? Well, because there's still not enough inventory out there. And so um, Pat says they are refining low rates to pay credit card debt at 28%. Um, so as long as they can afford that house payment, uh, that, that works out okay. But I think you, when you really look at all these numbers, you go, if we were going to really fall hard, I would think today's the day. But, you know, with rates going up over 8% this week, <clears throat> what's the seven-day moving average going to look like next week? Because when I look at this, you know, I'm looking at this every morning. I might miss a morning or two. But you can see that we ticked up a little bit, went down a little bit. So, in other words, we had oh, this over seven days, 2360. 2322, 2344. These are new contracts that were written when interest rates were 8%. How come they're higher than back here at 2271? Because quite frankly, not everybody is shot out of the uh, buying pool at 8%. There's still enough buyers to compete with this number of new listings that are coming out there. Now, the number of people that are waiting <coughs> is staggering. And when I say waiting, they're waiting for something to happen. If prices come down, you think they'll still wait. And if they get back in, what's going to happen to prices? Well, 
go up. There's people out there waiting for rates to get down in the fives. That looks like a distant fantasy to me. But if they did and they get back in, what do you think is going to have the prices? They're going to go up. So people are going to wait. They're going to wait for something to break. And they're going to wait for either rates to come down to where it's very attractive again, or they've got enough inventory out there where they can get a deal. If you can't afford this market, there's nothing anybody can say to you or do to help you. You simply can't afford this market. Sometimes you have no choice but to say, I'm just going to wait. I mean, I might want to wait for this reason or that reason, but bottom line is I can't afford it. So I'm sitting out and that's what we're seeing. And we're seeing it on a pretty large, a pretty large scale, but yet the number of houses that are on the market are not high enough uh, to make things, uh, you know, fall apart. So, you know, we'll, we'll keep looking at it, keep checking the numbers. You know, all eyes are going to be on the first of the year. Um, you've heard me say that uh, elections don't matter. And, uh, you know, I mean, did, oh, they're going to lower rates because of the election. How'd that work out for Jimmy Carter? <laughs> they don't lower rates because of an election. Um, Chris D says, I guess people are still looking at Mesa. I'm surprised. I have two showings for this weekend on my home. I'll make nine showings in 25 days. You're right, Chris. They're still out there. They are still out there. I uh, met a young gal just, just a few days ago that was all happy because they were buying their first house. She said, I go, you pretty excited about that? She goes, I get to get out of the apartment. I have a dog. I go, how'd you, uh, how'd you feel about the price? She goes, well, we found one we could work with. I said, what do you think about the interest rate? She goes, oh, I don't like them, but listen, I'm out of my apartment. I can't wait. I can't wait. She said she was so pumped. And, uh, Here's my buddy here, real-time finance. I agree with wait a year ago. Now they're out in my area. Pay, payments are easily $500, $500 out of reach. <clears throat> Hearing that everywhere. Um, Mike White, I see price reductions up to one-third over the next two years. The man behind the curtain desires housing to be affordable to more people. Now, um, I want to show you, you know, you probably heard that there was a letter that was sent out to Chairman Powell. And uh, Pat's going to talk a little bit about uh, um, somebody here says they're considering an accessory dwelling unit. Uh, those are starting to be pretty popular. And, and there's some changes on that that Pat's going to talk to you about next week too, as far as financing and qualifying. But did you know that there were three associations that wrote a letter to Chairman Powell and they said uh, they were urging him. It was the National Association of Realtors, the Mortgage Banker Association. I can't remember the third one a formal letter to him telling him, please don't raise rates anymore. You're hurting real estate. And I had to laugh at it. It's like, really? So Chairman Powell gets a letter from those and goes, oh no, I didn't see that coming. Yeah, he did. So anyway, we're helping. Now, Pat has drafted a letter uh, for us, from us. Uh, Dear Mr. Powell, can you please stop raising rates? It's hurting the real estate business in Arizona. Thank you, Rick and Pat. So we're here for you. Um, we're, we're, we're getting this letter sent out. I, and I asked Pat, instead of dear Mr. Powell, can we say dear Jerry? Um, Cause you know, we're close. And uh, so the three associations haven't made any progress with their letter, but I think when he gets ours, um, I think things you're going to see things move uh, because he may not be concerned about real estate and housing, but uh, he's a good friend. And when he sees from Rick and Pat, I mean, you tell me what's going to happen. So <laughs> that's going to have just as much impact as the one from the three associations. I got that. <laughs> Terry Biden will be on Dancing with the Stars. He's very good at doing the shuffle. Well, he might. <clears throat> uh, glad you like that, uh, Jason. That's a, uh, Pat drafted that and sent that to me yesterday for approval. And uh, so I'm saying, yeah, let's go forward with that. Just to recap here real quickly before I get off here, I encourage you, there's a video coming out at four o'clock. If you're thinking of buying new construction or if there's things you want to inspect in your house without hiring an inspector, he gives some great tips. And uh, we've had some really good uh, comments on the one he's done here in the past. Um, so I encourage you to watch it at four o'clock. It's with Dylan and I hope it's scheduled to go out at four. So I hope it still does. Uh, he should be getting a letter this week. I mailed it yesterday. Running at altitude says with 5.53 million subs, I think you'd have to pull it up. Well, yeah, look at millions and millions of viewers. 
that's why we're on at three in the afternoon because we don't want to upset the bandwidth for for the kids going to school. So you'd think he's, I'm sure he's heard of us. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> enough of that, folks. I hope everybody has a great weekend. And by the way, go Diamondbacks. Um, what a game yesterday. They pulled it off two to one and they pulled it off with a little short pop fly, just like Gonzalez did when we won the World Series. And the camera went right over to Gonzalez after that thing was hit. <laughs> kind of like, hey, just like you. just right. The bases were loaded. It was great. A lot of fun. So had to change my name, he said, as a bunch of my videos with my legal name were used without my knowledge. There are people that steal YouTube channels for some reason. I don't get it. There's a lot of wacky stuff that goes out there goes on out there and you know, we're just trying to be a couple of guys here having fun. So we'll get our technical snafus fixed next week. I use StreamYard. I think it's a problem within StreamYard. Pat signals very fast. Mine is wicked fast. There's something else going on, but when something doesn't work, I like to fix it. So I'm going to dive in and see what's going on. We will see you next week. Have a fantastic weekend. Go D-backs.